Hello everyone, thank you so much for stopping by. Marine here with you today. I am back with my last Halloween card of the year. As I said in my last video, I was asked by many people to recreate those two cards I made during release week back in August. So last time we made the one on the left with different colors and shape. And today we're going to make the same background as the one on the right with the same elements, pumpkins, bats and spiders, but in a different way. So first, let's see which products I'm going to use. We have the pumpkins from Simply Celebrate Fall, two bats from Fantastic Friends and the Add-on, the scarecrow from Happy Harvest, the pumpkin faces and sentiment from Pick of the Patch, and more faces from Costume Party, we have the Reveal Will Die set, the Pick of the Patch add-on, and the Apple Stencil, the largest stitched rectangle die, the stitched wood grain backdrop, the smallest everyday sentiment banner, the scripty smile die, and a paper from the Gotta Have Gingham Rainbow 6x6 paper pack. So we're starting with the background, I cut a reveal wheel panel out of Stratmore Bristol cardstock with the pumpkin add-on taped at the top. And I need to see how tall the heels will be, so I'm placing the scarce cross head right on the pumpkin opening, and I'm taping a heel stencil on the lower part of the panel. And now we can start coloring the upper part with oxidings. From the bottom to the top, I'm using Spiced Marmalade, Ripe Persimmon, Candied Apple and Black Soot to create the base of my Spooky Woods background. As always, I'm going back and forth with my blending tools many times to achieve a nice and almost seamless blending. So the base is done. Without removing the heel stencil, I taped one of the birch tree stencils on top of the panel. And now I'm using my oxidings again. I'm starting at the top with black soot, next candied apple, and then ripe persimmon. And this time I'm not using spiced marmalade. So let's remove the stencil and see how it looks. It's quite spooky, very nice. Now I'm just going to add some texture to this background to make it less flat and then I will color the lower part of the panel. So now for the other half of the panel, I'm going to use brown oxidings to create some kind of a muddy ground. I taped the heel stencil on the upper part and I'm first applying vintage photo to create a base. And then I will move the stencil and apply ground espresso oxiding to bring more contrast to this muddy section.
So, the muddy hills are done. Here's a close-up look at this spooky woods landscape. I definitely wouldn't dare to venture into those woods. Now let's start working on the scarecrow's head. I wanted to change colors, so I cut four wheels out of different cardstock, number two pencil, fake tan, sticky note, and canned pumpkin. We also have a brown wheel that I will use as a base. So the head will have four colors, so the first thing to do is to cut each wheel into quarters. I traced pencil lines of screen to help me achieve a clean cut. We're keeping a quarter of each color, and we're going to stick those four pieces on the base. Next, I couldn't find the template that coordinates with the pick of the patch reveal will add on, so I decided to use the apple stencil instead. It's almost the same shape as the pumpkin, so if the smiley faces fit into the apples, they definitely will fit into the pumpkin head. So I'm placing the template on top of the wheel, with each apple on a quarter, I'm keeping those two wheels together using a brad, as well as washi tape to make sure that nothing will move. And now it's time to stamp some faces, a different face on each apple section. Here I layered a paper bag wood grain panel on top of a gotta have gingham orange panel. I removed the apple stencil from the wheel and I cut a small circle. I'm putting the brad back into the wheel. Next I place the small circle at the back of the wheel and I open the brad to keep those two pieces together. Now I'm adding 2mm foam squares at the back of that small circle. I peel the backing papers off, and I place the wheel behind the reveal wheel panel. I'm lining one of the faces with the pumpkin opening, and while keeping everything in place with my hand, I place the panel on top of the card base, and I press firmly to stick the wheel to the wood grain panel, and here we go. Off screen, I added 2mm foam squares at the back of the reveal wheel panel, making sure to avoid the wheel area. And now I'm just attaching this panel on the card base. And see, the different smiley faces are all lined up with the pumpkin opening. So it wasn't a bad idea to use the apple template. Now it's time to color some images to bring more spookiness to our card and not just have a flying pumpkin head without nothing else around it.
So now that the images are done and before attaching them on the panel, I'm just going to add smiley faces to the pumpkins. So now let's take all those cute images and sorry Mr. Scarecrow, we don't need your head anymore. So now the final details. With those smiley faces, I just had to use the scripty smile die as the main part of my sentiment. I cut it out of some black glittery cardstock and I layered it on vellum. And I white hit embossed the words It's Halloween on a craft banner that I'm attaching to finally read Smile, it's Halloween. And last but not least, a black arrow next to the reveal wheel to let the recipient of the card know that they have to turn the wheel to make the smiley faces appear. As always, I finished the card with highlights and details on the images using a white gel pen. And we're done! I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I had fun creating it. Halloween is in a few days, so if you celebrate it, I'm wishing you a very happy Halloween and a spooky trick-or-treating night. See you soon in the next video. Bye!